Hi, my name is Kimberly Cockrum. I'm an oculoplastic surgeon who also does neuro-ophthalmology and recently reported on the quality of life in patients with chronic thyroid eye disease, so patients not necessarily in the active early phase, but rather years later. So many patients have permanent alterations, even surgical intervention, don't feel like they're back to themselves 100%. So they can have persistent changes in their face, so they don't look like themselves. They can have persistent double vision that can might have been addressed for looking straight ahead, but every time they look to the right or left or up, they see double. Uh, many times it disrupts the tear film, so they have permanent changes in their the comfort of their eyes, so they have tearing and irritation. And then thyroid imbalance um, definitely goes along with some mental instability issues. Um, definitely more patients have report anxiety, depression, and other emotional impact um, from their, their disease. Because the disease affects their face and because our faces are used to judge us, um, they, a lot of times patients have difficulty with professional relationships and social relationships. And those issues are ongoing. Thyroid eye disease is a disease that's in evolution in terms of how we're treating it. So about a year and a half ago, there was a new medication that was released. Um, the first FDA approved actually specific targeted disease for thyroid eye disease. So in the last 18 months, the landscape of how we treat patients and how we counsel patients has definitely evolved. Uh, the new medication is called Tepertubumab. Um, its commercial name is Tepeza. And so now we have a new tool in the toolbox. So some patients who are relatively mild, we're gonna to continue to treat them as we would have before this coming on market with just reassurance and having them use artificial tears without preservatives and trying to avoid salt and, you know, just basically educating them if, if this or that happens, come on back sooner. Um, patients with more moderate disease or severe disease, certainly, it's gonna be one of the things I'm gonna discuss right up front. In some patients, I'll start with um, IV steroids. I'm not a big fan of oral steroids because they have some side effects. And then we'll see if we're um, achieving our goals. Um, and then I'll talk with the patient about either adding the tepatubumab after the IV steroids or in some cases even starting it beforehand if the patient has contraindications to having steroids. I think the key is that these patients have lifelong impact to their visual system and to their facial function and form. And that we as physicians should have an ongoing relationship with these patients. Uh, even if they've had a nice surgical outcome, they're still gonna have other symptoms that, that can really bother them. Also, there's we now know that there's reactivation um, and that, that reactivation is, is in part due to stress. So certainly in this very unusual last 18 or 20 months, whatever it's been, I've seen a lot of patients who were relatively stable for long periods of time with their thyroid eye disease or other autoimmune conditions having reactivation. So this is really a lifelong issue that impacts the patients. And we just want to be really compassionate and make sure that they're educated about their options. As eye professionals, our top goal is that they have a quality of life that's optimized. And so again, just making sure that we educate our patients, communicate with our patients to make sure that whether it's blurred vision or pain, or maybe even just a change in the refraction or how they use their artificial tears can make um, big strides in terms of impacting the patient. What we we'll always want to avoid is minimizing patient symptomatology, because if the patient's actively having issues that disrupt tasks of daily listening, living. We should sit down and just chat with them about their options of how to combat that and how to work around it. But, you know, I tell the patients it's sort of like having arthritis. You know, whether you have a dry eye condition or you have thyroid eye disease, it's a lifelong condition that we can manage and we can try to make you feel the best you can feel. But unfortunately, it's here for good.
I think sitting down with the patient and potentially the family um, member or family members and just coming up with a game plan. Take a look at what they're doing right now and see if there's things that we can change to make them more comfortable and optimize their quality of life.